In this video, we're going to discuss the accelerometer, which helps us measure the accelerations that are being experienced by our vehicle. So let's go ahead and get started. So depicted here in this upper left uh, figure is our a basic model for uh, an accelerometer, a MEMS accelerometer. So we have a suspended mass uh, right here in the middle. And the suspended mass has uh, two springs uh, connected to it. And what these springs allow us to do is they're going to allow us to measure the change in our in, in a single direction. And so we'll end up using three of these to get all three axes of, of motion. Um, so we can look at two different values. One value is y. So that y is the actual change in uh, direction of this, of this box. Okay, so this external box. And another one is x, which is the change in, in uh, position of, of this mass. Okay, so we have this external um, box where our mass is connected in here with springs. Okay, so we can look at using Newton's second law, we can say that the mass times the acceleration of of our, so the mass times the acceleration of, I'm going to call it, we call it our proof mass, this little box in there, is equal to k, so the spring constant, so this is our spring, times the deviation between y and x position. So this is the difference between x and y. So our internal uh, versus our external position. And that'll, if it's equal to zero, that means they just, they line up perfectly, right? If the, if it's off, then we're going to be seeing that in the, uh, the, there's, the spring is going to be pulling it back. Okay. So, uh, we note that the acceleration of the proof mass is proportional to the deflection of the suspension. So that's this, that's this equation that we're, we're talking about here. So we can take the Laplace transform, and remember when we take the Laplace transform, a double derivative is just going to give us an s squared. So in our Laplace transform, we see this s squared showing up. We divide x of s divided by y of s, and we'll end up getting this simple transfer function, right? And this, this bottom portion is really from that, that spring. And we see the mass and the spring constant show up show up right there. Uh, since, since x of s over y of s is equal to s squared over y squared, or s squared times x of s over s squared times y of s, so again these are kind of in parentheses, right, we can just cancel that out and we get the left hand side. Um, we can then write the acceleration of x over the acceleration of y is equal to the same transfer function. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, one thing you'll note here is this is the shape of this transfer function. So if we look, were to look at a Bode plot of this guy, um, it would be close to unity for some time. So what this tells us is that for for relatively well, I won't say real, for uh, accelerations below a certain frequency, so if we have accelerations changing below a certain frequency, um, the inputs, the input and output are the, these guys are going to match pretty well. So this transfer function is going to be near unity. So we'll experience near unity. And then it'll start to fall off, and this fall off will be dependent upon our uh, m over k, or when we divide it out, it's going to be k over m. So depending on our mass, the size of our mass and that spring constant, um, this line where it's going to be a really great approximation for about the same thing, um, we can uh, 
we can make that extend out further or be smaller. But at any rate, what it tells us is that we can, to a reasonable degree, measure the acceleration of our system. So we have, uh, we can then model our accelerometer um, where we're going to get a voltage out. So this is measured in volts. We're going to have the true acceleration along that axis. Um, and this, this K is going to be a constant that maps from our meters per second squared to volts. So it's some, some constant. And typically we have a bias. And these, this bias is a slow moving. It could be a random walk or um, anyway, it's a slow moving value. And then we have noise that comes in um, and we can, we'll typically model that as white noise that's rapid oscillations. And you could see that in the, when we had the simulation pulled up for the accelerometer. Okay, so we have, we have our, our model for the accelerometer. Um, and, and this is uh, in terms of volts out. But the, the biggest thing here is that it's going to be proportional uh, to the actual acceleration plus some noise terms. So this next slide just depicts uh, in terms of a MEMS uh, accelerometer really how small uh, the accelerometers are. Uh, so that's, that's pretty cool. And they, so they can go nicely, these MEMS accelerometers can go nicely on a, on a UAV. Okay. Now, the acceleration that's measured is, is an interesting, or the, there's a fairly book called, the slides call it a tricky concept, right? It's going to measure the externally applied accelerations, right? Which measures all of the forces acting on our system except for gravity because gravity is going to affect both uh, both the outside and the interior the same. So if you set down an accelerometer on a tabletop, you'll see that you end up getting a, a slight depression, right? So the X and Y don't line up, right? So remember, this is Y and this is X in that direction. So you see that the middle of the mass doesn't line up with the middle of, of the accelerometer apparatus. Uh, so the accelerometer does not measure gravity since both the proof mass and the, and the casing are acted on by the gravity in the exact same way. Uh, so what we end up measuring out is that we will see, we'll, we'll end up seeing gravity um, in the measurement. So we will, uh, when we measure our acceleration, it's going to be one over M times our total force, right? Minus the gravity force. So we'll get the, the negative of the gravity force. So in our, in our body frame, when, if, when we saw it in the simulation, we were seeing an ex acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second. So negative 9.8 meters per second squared and it was it was oscillating rapidly around it um, that was in the kb axis when the aircraft wasn't moving at all vertically right so kb axis is pointing down and so it was measuring a the the measured force was up 9.8 meters per second squared well times our mass uh, so well no it was it's a Sorry, it measures the acceleration, right? So it was 9.8 meters per second squared going up, even though our aircraft wasn't, wasn't moving at all in the vertical direction. So that's the one tricky thing about the accelerometer measurement is we always have to extract out that, or we have to note that it's not measuring the gravity force. Uh, and so we have to make sure we account for that. So we can write this out just a little bit more. So we 
the A measured, so that's our acceleration measured, is going to be 1 over m times our non-gravitational forces. So again, written the same way, it's going to measure all of the forces except for gravity. So that's just saying what we said on the previous slide, just uh, slightly differently. Okay, so now let's let's work it out, work out the math, and come up with an, a good equation for this this the uh, acceleration that we measure. So again, we are doing one over m times the total force minus our gravity. And what we modeled in uh, chapters three and four were drag force, a lift force, gravity, and thrust. Right, so. The lift and the drag, well, lift was caused by the wings, the drag was caused by the air coming against the aircraft, plus the, uh, the lift uh, uh, drag caused by the lift. Um, and we have the thrust is measured from the prop, basically pulling the aircraft forward, right? And we have gravity pulling it down. So if we write out F total, that's what we have here. And we leave in our minus gravity right there. So we can cross these out. And in our model that we've developed, that just means that the accelerometer is going or the measured acceleration is going to be measuring the acceleration due to lift, drag, and thrust. So those are the three leftover uh, forces um, that we've modeled. So Right here, we can jump in and get a little bit more detailed about the, the model that we're, we're developing. So right here, we, we've come up with this relationship before. So we have, we have mass times, this is going to be our acceleration. And this is our, our total forces, right? So F equals MA. Um, and with this, this acceleration is just the time derivative of the velocity. So this is the the our, the time derivative of our velocity with respect to the body frame. So I'll just put with respect to body frame. And then the body movement with respect to the inertial. Oh, I can't spell inertial. Inertial. Okay. Excellent. And so this is just our rotational velocities um, of, of the aircraft. Okay. So we're going to, again, we've, we've written this down, I don't know how many times by now. But we can then write, write these and, and uh, equate them. Right. So we have this guy coming in from above minus one over gravity. So hold on. Sorry, I got turned around just a little bit. So we have our we have our value for F total, right? Right there. So all we're doing is plugging in F total and then we'll have F gravity. So we're multiplying the one over M times our F gravity. And there you have it. So now we have these are our body frame velocities. So if we express this in the body frame, right, we have these guys. And we'll end up getting this component is our u dot, v dot, and w dot. This component right here gives us these terms where we have, we're crossing our translational velocity with our rotational velocity. And then here's our 1 over m gravity gives us these, these final terms. So we've seen all of these terms before, um, but now we can see what our, what our measured uh, acceleration would be. Okay, so we can come up with a few different models to, to implement. This one, if we're given all of the states already, this one's pretty easy because this one we, right here, um, we have, we typically calculate with our derivatives function. Right, so we know what u dot, v dot, and, and w dot are. These are just states. And right here, these are just functions of states.
And the final terms, we're going to put these in as white noise, right? And we'll characterize that by, we'll, we'll say that it's zero mean, and we'll define its standard deviation. Okay. Um, so I should say that this is given. Okay. So taking a look at that, we could also go back and we could calculate um, all of all of these things. So we could we could end up, and this is actually an older model, so I wouldn't even use that. Um, but in we could take in our u dot v dot no, and w dot and plug them in. So we could go back to first basic principles, uh, but there's not not a real need for that since we. We already have our derivatives function that's going to be calculating that. Another very common way we could do it, since we're already calculating the forces and uh, forces and moments acting on our aircraft, right? So this we can just get from F super B, and then we're just subtracting out the gravity term. So we're subtracting out the gravity, and then again, this is the same noise as, as above. So when we're, when we're designing our, we'll, we'll use a couple different models. This one right here with a star next to it is fantastic for when we're looking at, um, look, if we want it as a function of all of our states. So that's great. We can also use that one, but we're, we're not going to use that one for right now. Um, and this one is if we if we're trying to produce the signal, this is great for producing. Well, both both of them are really great for producing it, but because we've already uh, calculated the forces, it's pretty quick to to then just calculate that accelerometer measurement. Okay, so there you have it. Now we can measure our accelerations and produce uh, this measurement signal.